Megeliot's Pool by Dr. Seuss. Young man laughed the farmer, you're sort of a fool. You'll never catch fish in Megeliot's pool. The pool is too small, and you might as well know it. When people have junk, here's the place they throw it. You might catch a boot, or you might catch a can. You might catch a bottle, but listen, young man. If you sat 50 years with your worms and your wishes, you'd grow a long beard before you'd catch fishes. Hmm, answered Marco. It may be that you're right. I've been here three hours without one single bite. There might be no fish, but again, well, there might. Because you never can tell what goes on down below. This pool might be bigger than you or I know. This might be a pool like I've read of in books, connected to one of those underground brooks. An underground river that starts here and flows right under the pasture and then, well, who knows? It might go along, down where no one can see, right under State Highway 203, right under the wagons, right under the toes of Mrs. Ambroso, who's hanging out clothes. It might keep on flowing, perhaps, who can tell? Right under the people in Sneedon's hotel, right under the grass where they're playing croquet, right under the mountains, and far, far away. This might be a river, now mightn't it be, connecting Megeliot's pool with the sea. Then maybe some fish might be swimming toward me. If such a thing could be, it certainly would be. Megeliot's pool, this way. Some very smart fellow might point out the way to the place where I'm fishing, and that's why I say, if I wait long enough, if I'm patient and cool, who knows what I'll catch in McGilliot's pool? I might catch a thin fish. I might catch a sour fish. I might catch a short or a long, long drawn out fish. Any kind, any shape, any color or size, I might catch some fish that would open your eyes. I won't be surprised if a dogfish appears, complete with a collar and long floppy ears, woofing along and perhaps he might chase a whole lot of catfish right straight to this place. I might catch a fish with a pinwheel-like tail. I might catch a fish who has fins like a sail. I might catch some young fish, some high jumping friskers. I might catch an old one with long flowing whiskers. I might catch a fish with a long curly nose. I might catch a fish that, like a rooster that crows. I might catch a fish with a checkerboard belly or even a fish made of strawberry jelly. I might catch a seahorse. Now mightn't I now? I might catch a fish who is partly a cow. Some fish from the tropics, all sunburned and hot, might decide to swim up. Well, they might, might they not? Racing up north for a chance to get cool, full steam ahead for McGilliot's pool. Some Eskimo fish from beyond Hudson Bay might decide to swim down, might be headed this way. It's a pretty long trip, but they might, and they may.
I might catch an eel. Well, I might. It depends. A long twisting eel with a lot of strange bends. And oddly enough, with a head on both ends. One doesn't catch this kind of fish as a rule, but the chances are fine in McGilliot's pool. I might catch a fish with a terrible grouch. Or an Australian fish with a kangaroo's pouch. Who wants to catch small ones like mackerel or trout? Say, I'll catch a sawfish with such a long snout that he needs an assistant to help him about. If I wait long enough, if I'm patient and cool, who knows what I'll catch in McGilliot's pool. Some roughneck old lobster, all gristle and muscle, might grab at my bait, then would I have a tussle. To land one so tough might take two or three hours, but the next might be easy. Kind of like, what? The kind that like flowers. I might catch some sort of a fast-moving bloke who zips through the waves with an overarm stroke. I might, and I may. And that's really no joke. A fish even faster. A fish, if you please, who slides down the slides of strange islands on skis. He might ski on over and pay me a visit. That's not impossible, really, now is it? Some circus fish, fish from an acrobat school, might stage a big show in McGilliot's pool. Or I might catch a fish from a stranger place yet, from the world's highest river in far off Tibet, where the falls are so deep that it's dangerous to ride them, so the fish put up chutes and they float down beside them. From the world's deepest ocean, from way down below, from down in the mud where the deep divers go, from down in the mire and the muck and the murk, I might catch some fish who are all going glurk. Whales, I'll catch whales. Yes, a whole herd of whales, all spouting their spouts and all thrashing their tails. I'll catch 50 whales, then I'll stop for a day, because there's nothing that's bigger than whales, so they say. Still, of course, it might be. That there is something bigger, some sort of a kind of a thingamajigger. A fish that's so big, if you know what I mean, that he makes a whale look like a tiny sardine. Oh, the sea is so full of a number of fish, if a fellow is patient, he might get his wish. And that's why I think that I'm not such a fool when I sit here and fish in McGilliot's pool.